Hello my people and welcome back to Freedom Forest. Today we're going to be having a look at our free Free Sisters plantings. So let's go and check it out. One of the first things you might notice looking at this bed of corn is that it's not planted in the usual big block like you might see in farmers fields. In fact there's gaps all around it and that's because this year I've used a planting method that several Native American tribes of North America utilised, one of those called the Hidatsa. And what's different to how I did this last year is that they're now grown in mounds or little clumps and the beauty of this is you come along and sow your seed direct this year I did about eight in a circle, north, east, south and west, two in each hole. As you can see our corn is starting to grow nicely and everything you see here was sown direct. I think it was the second week or the first week of May this year actually, I sowed those direct. And these were saved seed from last year and I've been collecting our own seed for the last couple of years now. And this is the Blue Hopi variety from the Hopi Nation of uh, American Indians and it's a very special corn because it deals very well with droughts and we're now becoming quite a drought nation every year. It seems to be long extended periods without rain during the summertime. And the Blue Hopi is quite a long season flower corn and this grows to seven or eight feet and you leave it to mature on the plant and then you can use that for parched corn or flour once it's dried out at the end of the season. You can use it for making tortillas, flatbreads, and it also makes a beautiful porridge. We did have quite a lot of losses this year when the corn was very small, um, just after germination, when it's around about an inch to two inches tall. Rabbits and birds were just coming in and just digging it up. And they don't even eat it, they just leave it on the floor. So I had to come round on two occasions actually and poke in uh, more seed. Uh, but luckily it germinated and it's coming up strong now. One of the things I did to try and stop them is, hopefully you can see here, I made these chicken wire cages and this was some old stuff I had which is going a bit rusty so I didn't mind cutting it up. And I just kind of made it into circles into a bit of a dome shape and put it around our plants. And that seemed to be enough to allow the corn uh, to start growing and get past that small stage where they don't seem to bother it anymore and then these just pull off over the top like that. And you can probably see a bit clearer here looking through sideways that we have our clumps of corn about five foot apart and then in between those we have our squashes planted and they're going to be meandering their way through covering this ground and hopefully preventing other pests coming in as much as possible with their slightly hairy spiky stems. We've actually got a mixture of zucchinis and squash in this bed. And if you see silver or white coloration on some of your leaves, like this one here, don't panic, it's probably not a problem. I made a video on the cause of this, which I'll link to now. And we've got our beans uh, in this bed planted around the corn, uh, which will be coming up and this isn't runner beans, this is pole beans in this bed. And I did have a big run of sunflowers planted along here, sown direct as well, that the birds and the rabbits decided to take for themselves. Um, but the sunflowers are another crop that the Native Americans grew in combination with the Three Sisters. And they were used as sometimes windbreaks almost in between different corn varieties to help prevent cross-pollination. And also they, milled the seeds up or ground them up into a flower as well. And along the side of the bed here I've got some echinaceas and we've got T65 sweet potatoes planted along the margins as well. I just think this method of Free Sisters Gardening just looks so beautiful and you can see the massive benefit to growing in the mounds as well or in little clumps because you still get that lovely sunlight in between the plants so you're getting sun hitting the ground all around the corn, so everything remains in a full sun position, which allows the beans and the squash to grow so much better than when it's all in 
kind of one big clump like I planted last year. So I've been through several times up until now doing a little bit of weeding between the mounds here and I'm hoping now that um, as the squash really starts to spread out that we'll get to a stage where I don't really have to do anything else in here until the harvest time. <laughs> This is our second bed in an area we call the Village Green. In this bed we've got our popping corn and this is a heritage variety. In fact it's a blend of a lot of different heirloom varieties that a Native American guy was basically trying to save. He was hunting down a lot of the varieties that were basically just becoming lost and he was growing them year on year and they were cross-pollinating each other and this is a result. Um, we grew these last year and you can see some of the beautiful multicoloured cobs that come out. And these are no good for eating like sweet corn because they're very solid. Um, when they're ripe and mature, you wouldn't want to bite into them. You'd probably break your teeth, but you let them dry out for a little while and you can have your own popcorn. This is another tall, longer season variety needing around about 110 days. Both of these were planted direct and we've also got in here some jumbo pink banana squash. There were many different ways tribes planted their corn, bean and squash. And in this bed, I'm actually planting our beans in between the corn. So they have to run out first and find the corn stalks to go up. We've also got quite a lot of self-seeded carrots in here, which I've left and we've just been picking as we need them. The glass gem corn is a longer season corn and it will grow to about seven, almost eight foot. And that's very important to grow a variety like that when you're growing the runner beans because they really do tend to kind of have a lot of foliage and they can smother out the silks of smaller growing corn varieties like many of the sweet corn varieties that are grown these days and you won't get very good pollination if that happens. And our last three sisters bed and our smallest one this year is in the area behind me. And actually to my left is our T65 sweet potatoes, one of our main outdoor beds of those. And um, we've also got self-seeded calendula along here, which just self-seeds everywhere. We just pull it out where we don't want it, but we love it. And it makes a beautiful um, decoration and edible petals in a nice salad. And to the back of those, actually we've got a lot of yak on as well. But to the point of this video, this side of me, we have our three sisters and this is the sweet corn. And these have been the biggest fawn in my side this year. They've been the most difficult crop I've grown out of everything because the birds have just gone ballistic on them. The birds, the mice, the rats, everything. As Soon as they're germinating, and in fact, before they've even germinated, they've been smelling out where I've planted them and just consistently digging them out. So I've had to sow them direct three times actually in this bed. And then on the third time I sowed them, I actually put some in modules because I didn't have high hopes that they were going to make it. So half of what I've got here, I actually planted out in modules. Um, and this was a really, really late sowing, probably beginning of June time I did these. But let's go and have a closer look anyway. So the results in here are quite mixed and varied actually in terms of the corn. Uh, we do have sun coming on which is quite healthy um, so I have hopes we are going to have some sweet corn this year uh, but I think maybe it's just the higher amount of sugars in the actual seed itself potentially that yeah the mice and the birds just seem to go extra mad for uh, which doesn't seem to be a problem with the flower and the popcorn varieties which is quite interesting so it may be that reluctantly I do have to start sweet corn off in modules uh, even as a backup each year now. It's not all bad though, because we did get a really nice harvest of early potatoes from this bed as well, which were volunteers from last year, which I harvested a few weeks ago. The sweet potatoes now are rooted in and they're starting to spread out a bit now, which is really nice to see. I love it to see when they start to get their new growth emerging. We had our first heavy bit of rain last night for ages, so I'm expecting them to really start rocketing off now. We've had nice success with the yakons growing back as well. We just replant these as replant perennials when we do our harvesting. And the only time that 
it's really an issue that we may potentially lose them is when they're first starting to emerge again, um, they don't have roots at that stage on the actual rhizomes themselves that we've replanted. So they're very prone to blackbirds pulling them out. Um, so I try and net them if I can, again, like I do for the sweet potato, just to give that bit of protection until they root firmly out down into the ground after a few weeks. I thought this was really cool as well. I found this yakon with variegated leaves there. So if that's got its own little bit of growing tip this year, I might see if I can divide it and propagate variegated yakon. Well guys, I really hope you've enjoyed this little update video. Just looking around the Three Sisters gardens we've been planting here and pretty happy with how it's going so far. We've had our challenges as always with the birds and the other pests coming in, but that's just all part of nature. We have to deal with it. Overall, we've still got more than enough really. So very thankful for that. And I would also like to thank you guys as well as always for watching our videos. We really do appreciate it. And we'd love to hear from you guys what corn varieties or what beans and squash you're growing this year. And if any of you guys have tried the Three Sisters, you're giving it a go for the first time. Guys, as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to drop me a comment below and like the video if you enjoyed having a look at how it's growing on so far. Catch you next time. Peace and plants.